Hello everybody. Welcome to our first in a while CryEngine AMA. And um, AMA sounds rather cool. Like, you know, uh, I don't know, free fighting or something. It stands <laughs> for ask me anything. So it's pretty much that. Just with words, you know. Ah, so many familiar faces. Cool, yeah. While people pour in uh, to watch and listen to us talk, welcome everyone. This is Gabriel. I'm the brand manager for CryEngine. Uh, some of you know me. I hope all of you know me. Um, and I have a guest with me today. I have the honor of hosting our new general manager for CryEngine. Artu, would you like to introduce yourself? Definitely. Thanks, Nick. And hi, everybody. Excited to be here today, not just for the, the interesting questions that you were sending us, um, but also that this is my first Discord stream. Huh? Um, but yeah, just to kind of like give a bit of a background. Back in the days, I started 17 years ago at NVIDIA as a programmer doing GPU driver programming and then since then been through multiple companies revolving around the real-time graphics industry and started at Crydeck uh, last June. And we are very happy to have you. So, uh, as Arthur is now the boss of all of us, kinda, <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're stoked to see what he has to say. So we uh, pull him in here to answer all your burning questions you might be having about CryEngine and the long-term support update 5.7 and where it's going. So, but first things first, some rules to the game as always. Uh, some of you know the drill, others might be new to this. First time we were using a stage channel on Discord as well. A uh, really nifty feature. Last time we did this, we didn't have that feature yet, which uh, tells me that we haven't done this in too long. Uh, but <laughs> so if you want permission to speak in this stage channel, you have to request it from one of the moderators. But uh, please, for now, uh, we asked ahead that you put your questions into the hashtag AMA dash questions um, channel. That's a text channel, actually. And we wanted to give you guys some time to come up with the right answers, uh, with the right questions. And you did. And we asked the community to vote on the most pressing ones. And we want to honor the priority of that vote. Which means for today, we are mostly picking questions that have been put in the chat before and have been upvoted by the community. We only have one hour. That means we will focus on answering as many of those as we can. And hopefully in the end, we have a um, couple minutes left for free questions. We will see. But as long as we are working through these questions, what I will do is I will read out the question uh, and the name of the person who was asking the question. And if the person is here, I will ask them if they want to formulate their question or questions themselves, right? But one thing is very important, and that is an important disclaimer. We are recording this, all right? We are recording this as a podcast format for YouTube for everyone who cannot be here today due to other arrangements, engagements, or time zones. Which means if you opt in to ask for speaking permissions, you go on record. And it is important that you don't have anything against us putting that on YouTube afterwards. All right. So just so you know, nobody has to speak. Um, you can also put your questions in chat. I can read that out loud also later in uh, the free for all so don't worry everybody can get a word in but if you decide to speak up please be aware that you have to be okay with us putting that on youtube later all right i think that's all understood then so yeah like i said it's only an hour so i don't want to uh, take more time away from your burning questions. 
What do you think, Arthur? Should we start answering the first couple of questions? Let's go. Then we have some time as well for some additional or follow-up questions, if there are any in in terms of the answers. Perfect. So I have my list right here. Um, so a long-term member of this community, Igor Shepard. I don't know if you're here today, Igor, but you had some interesting questions that I thought also summed up a lot of the follow-up questions. And you were one of the first, the first people to actually ask them in chat, which is why I would like to give them some priority. Uh, so you had questions about the long-term support update. The next update that we have announced is CryEngine 5.7. LTS, which stands for Long-Term Support Update. Mm -hmm. And basically, Igor's questions were all evolving around the features that we had on the roadmap previously and are not on the roadmap now for the 5.7 Long-Term Support Update. Yep. So, Artu, what is uh, the story? The Long-Term Support Update we saw some changes on the roadmap for 5.7. So to sum it up, what is coming to 5.7? Are there going to be more additions to the 5.7 update? And what is happening to the items that were now lost in that roadmap update? There is quite a lot in there, right? Um, but let's start with the LTS, right? The, the, um, the LTS will conclude the, the, the crimes in five brands, right? So that will be the last update that we'll be making in there. You all have the roadmap items there in the, the page, that uh, what we will be doing there. Um, but what comes to the what we had in the past on the roadmap? So what we're doing at the moment internally, we're steering most of the resources to, to our internal production needs, as you have seen as well. Um, the update coming that uh, we made the announcement about Crisis 4, for example. Um, and, and most of those things, right, when we're talking about mobile, we're talking about ray tracing, they are all on the list to come. Um, and then definitely, you know, we're still looking into them. But the timeline for the release is still a bit of a unknown to us at, at the moment as we're still making all the plans and setting up the, the roadmaps. Um, so that's the, that's the current situation. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, I hope that uh, brings a bit more clarity to what is coming next and what we are planning with um, 5.7. Obviously, most of your questions are, are about 5.7 and what's next. Uh, so we will see a couple of overlapping questions here. Um, so Jan, Jan Bostel. Um, I can I can see you here today, Jan. Uh, you had some questions. Are you okay with me reading them? Or would you like to request permission to speak? Just giving them some time to reply. All right. Yes, I will read them. Perfect. Perfect. So um, the first question that you had um, and uh, that ties into this, uh, what we just said, is what does long-term support actually mean? You want to take that one, Arto? Or... Yeah, definitely. In that sense, that uh, like I already said, right, that uh, the long-term support means that uh, that will be the last uh, version update for the 5.x uh, um, branch of, of CryEngine. Um, and we're not planning to add any more features there, right? Um, we do have a support for that in case there will be something that happens that we need to fix. But we're at the moment, like I said, we're steering most of the resources for the internal needs. And, and that means that uh, we don't have at the moment so much uh, resources working on, on, on the public uh, versions. Thank you, Arto. Jan had a couple more questions. Um, he's the head of the uh, game developer team that develops Akurita, mm -hmm. which is one of the next upcoming uh, CryEngine indie games that I'm very much looking forward to, by the way. 
So thanks for the great work, guys. Big shout out to you. Um, so one of the other questions that Jan had is um, it's probably a question that many people had. Not probably, I know, because there were a lot of these in chat. It was basically <laughs> when. When will we get more info about the next release? When will it happen? So we will be um, doing a lot of updates, updates throughout the year. This is the, the very first one of them, right? We want to bring more transparency to what is happening with CryEngine and, and what are the plans as we also, you know, set them in stone here throughout the year. And then I believe, Nick, you and your team are, are busy already, you know, laying out the roadmap as well, what to come. But I would imagine that we will be doing more these Ask Me Anything um, events and, and other things as well to talk about that what will be the upcoming features of the next TriEngine, what will be the timeline as it clarifies as well, um, and so forth, right? Um, so there is a lot of different plans and we do want to involve the ecosystem and our licenses there. The how we will do it um, is still a bit up in the air. So of course, we're discussing about beta programs and so forth to come. Um, no timeline, but that's also something that is on Nick's table. Um, so I'm sure that he will be informing you guys in the future as well exactly so many people have frequently asked about the beta program uh, there was a beta program announced um, like a year two years back that uh, right. we weren't able to follow through with because honestly there was suddenly a global pandemic hitting the show floors of the world and that was uh, quite for us also quite um, a shock and something we had to deal with mm -hmm. properly um, but so I am the first person spearheading the beta program and how it's hopefully going to shape up. And I'm happy to say that um, we will put resources into that because it is very important for us to get your feedback in and get it in on early, especially the guys and girls and everyone in between who are working with the engine right now and have things in production. We want to de definitely take you on board on our journey moving forward. We appreciate that you work with our engine and give us feedback that you help us make the engine better every day and that you are creating great showcases for our technology that can stand alongside our own uh, games and projects. So definitely beta program is not, um, it's postponed, but it will happen. Um, and we are working on how we can bring it to you the best way possible. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> So, um, and another one that I can probably take that was tying in here uh, from Jan was, well, when will the marketplace submissions work again? Um, as you know, we had a we had an update recently that the marketplace will be deprecated, and we will bring it back as a free asset database. Um, we have a timeline that we're looking at optimistically two to three weeks um fingers crossed guys <laughs> um we we are planning for two to three weeks until the free asset database is there um and the commercial part of the marketplace is removed and then everyone will be able to create new vendor profiles and existing vendor profiles will still be there as well and you will be able to turn your existing products into um, free products all paid products will be hidden so don't worry like the stuff that you had there with a price tag on it that won't just be available for free now this will be your decision um, you can go into your vendor profile login as usual and decide if you want to take it down or you know make it available for free and also everyone can make a new profile um, an asset provider profile Vendor is not quite the right word now because it's un, it's not for sale anymore, right? But yeah, you can basically create new products and new profiles as well. Cool. And uh, last but not least, there was another one. Let me see. We have to move on because other people had questions too, but those were questions that several people had. So I decided that <laughs> makes sense to, you know, um, give some answers to your burning questions an interesting one from jan the last one is do you plan to modernize game sdk we do we do and then we are currently actually working on a plan it has started already 
last year, um, but we're at the moment working even with close co- closely with our production teams to to lay out the plan that what will be needed in the in the next generation of Cry Engine game SDK. And I'm actually very excited about that because yeah, we are we <laughs> are really excited about that. <laughs> oh, good things are coming, guys. <laughs> I see uh, Moose King is there, and is totally not Moose King. I thought you, I saw, I thought you said you were going to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Time zones, guys. Please don't don't overstretch yourself just to be here. We're recording everything, and you can you can listen to it later. Um, but uh, yeah, Moose actually had a question as well, which I know is is kind of a an important thing for many of you guys. And Moose was asking about Flowgraph. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't know if you want to ask your question yourself. Yep, exactly. So we are working on the next generation of visual scripting, right? Um, I think that's not the not the secret in that sense, right? Um, and we will be deprecating Flowcraft to come. And the idea is to combine those functionalities in there or in other features as well. So in that sense that you will still have the same capabilities, but more, let's say, consolidated into one tool chain and more productized um, in that sense that, of course, Flowcraft is, um, you know, it, it was great at its time, um, but um, we need to we need to renew our tool chains as well. So um, there are some new things to come, and we do want to talk about them this year as well. Nice. Yeah. And that is one of the things we're also very excited about. But um, as you see, we are very transparent and open but many things are still moving. Um, it's moving forward and it's, it's we're doing great strides. Um, and please don't think that, I mean, this is it, right? We will do this more often moving forward. We want to give you more frequent development uh, updates and make sure that you guys um, know what's happening. But sometimes the answer will still be, it's happening when it's happening. Um, <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And yeah. a lot of plans are being set at the moment. So it's, of course, you know, we can't give a definite answer if we don't even have it internally, maybe, right? That in terms of timeline or even a complete plan. So uh, that's the reason for some of the, the answers being a bit more, let's say, generic. And I mean, we're currently focusing on the 5.7 long-term support update. Um, while of course, in the background, we are already drawing road strokes and plan the next installments. But the 5.7 is the next big immediate thing that is going to happen. Mm-hmm. Looking at that, um, I have a question from Alexander Duval. I don't know, Alexander, are you here today? Yes, you are here. Uh, you were asking something about VR development. Do you want to ask your question yourself or should I read it for you? I read it. All right, we'll do. So Alexander was asking, I noticed that the Oculus pipeline is taking the focus. What about the Steam VR pipeline? That's a really good question, right? Um, that uh, VR is definitely an, an XR is on our plans in the future as well. Um, we have some active development on that side as well all the time. As you may have seen that we, we recently released uh, the Climb 2 as well. Um, but um, it's hard to say at the moment that when uh, and which um, VR platforms we will be supporting, right? Um, so that's something that can't give a definite answer today, but definitely VRXR and, and it is on our you know roadmap at the moment. That good for you, Alexander? <laughs> so Alexander is asking, can I give you some of my work then for VR? It might help. That's an interesting idea as well. Of course, we're open to look and, and, and discuss with our community if we could, you know, do something together as well. And I think this is, Nick, something that you're looking into as well in your plans, right, with the beta programs and these, that how do we involve 
community more in our feature development and i know already like already now that uh, having been only for a while at crytek that there is a lot of great work that the community has done and that we could have leveraged before so we're looking into that that hey how could we how could we collaborate right if you guys have done some great features that could be worthwhile having in the cry engine or as an add-ons or whatever they are um but that's something as well that you know we need to still be planning out and um with Nick and the community team. Yeah, so, um, and that ties in with another question that I think several people kind of had, um, <laughs> and that was, what about GitHub? Right, it's a big question, what about GitHub? What about it? So, um, <laughs> like, <laughs> so CryEngine on, on GitHub was always a passion project of ours, um, but it uh, comes with some problems or challenges. That's 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 what you say today, right? You say challenges, problems don't exist. <laughs> um, in German, we have a saying that, uh, yeah, okay, nobody speaks German here, so that doesn't happen. Anyways, um, <laughs> you can translate <laughs> if, it make, if it makes any sense in English, huh? In yeah, in German we say, "Probleme sind nur Lösungen in Arbeitskleidung." Mm -hmm. So the chat can translate that now. I give you that fun task. <laughs> so um, yeah. Anyways, uh, the challenge with with GitHub is there are several challenges with GitHub. We have always appreciated their contributions, um, but it takes a long time to accept pull requests and review them. And yeah. we want to do that properly because we have a commercial product that is not actually open source, right? Um, it's full source but it's not open source. So we always will be responsible for what goes into our code and what we do right. and the expectation, what comes out at the end is always on us. Mm -hmm. So we are currently working on a contributor and incentive program where we can accept submissions to our code, um, but at the same time, make sure that we are also legally safe because you know Correct. we cannot just accept commits or um, your work without compensation. There are some laws about when and how we can actually legally do that. They vary from country to country, actually. There are patent laws, etc. cetera. Um, and we just have to make sure that we do it properly and, and, and that your rights and our rights um, are actually guarded, um, right? And this process, we are investigating it um, because like I said, we just want you to help and assist with CryEngine. We're looking at, you know, some way to reward you for this as well when you do it. Um, yeah, and that means GitHub is still very much on the table and how we're going to do it exactly is in the works. And I can't tell you yet how it's going to be, but I think GitHub will play a big role in our beta program as well. Um, so yeah, that is where we currently are. Mm -hmm. Is that a satisfactory answer? For Alexander and uh, the others who were asking. Yes. All right. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> cool. So then let's move on. Um, we have so, more, so much more questions. Um, let me see. Looking for the. There are a couple of. Um, so um, people are naturally very curious about what's next mm -hmm. next <laughs> um, and i have to say up front that like i said we are currently focusing on the long-term support update and um, the other moving parts we will probably speak in detail at a later point but i think one version that is important and that we should be transparent about um, there was a, tr a question from tristian tristian are you are you here today um, let's see, I don't think they are here. So many people, I just can't. Oh, I see you, Tristian. Tristian, I don't know. <laughs> How do I pronounce this? Um, AFK, ah, oh, see. Should we wait then with the question? Not. Ah, they are typing. Typing. All right. I will read it. Mm -hmm. I will read it for you. So um, one, again, they had several questions. One of them is looking further down the road with the next iteration of CryEngine. 
Can we expect any systems from the existing CryEngine version to port or migrate into the new CryEngine version? I.e., will it be a brand new framework or will we see some of the old systems in there? Exactly. That's a very good question, right? That we're we're doing a lot of refactoring and a lot of new systems as well at the same time. While, of course, there will be some old systems remaining, but we won't have backwards compatibility, right? So we're at the moment looking at how would we do in migration guides and, and so forth to help you to move from the 5.x branch towards the next generation of crimes in brands when it's out there. Um, and I, I believe that that will be something that we want to do and, and, and discuss as well in, in terms of the beta program, working with our licensees and community together here throughout the years to come that um, as we work towards the, you know, the, the next release of CryEngine. Um, so that's definitely something there where we do want to uh, work with the, the community and the licensees as well, and that we wouldn't be the only ones touching and trying to migrate to top on the, the, the current main branch. So yes, there will be changes. Um, how much? Um, there will be quite a lot. There won't be backwards compatibility. There will be work that needs needed to be done, but we're making as much as plans to, to, to make it as easy as possible for you. Thank you, Arto. Um, I think a question that is also tying in there that Tristan also had was, um, will the next iteration of CryEngine have some form of a new game UI support? And I'm asking that because I know this is a very <laughs> burning question for many, many people here. Yeah, definitely. So we will be replacing scale form to come, but I can't talk about it more at the moment. But yes, there will be a, a new game UI solution uh, within CryEngine to come. Yeah. And then tying into that, there were questions about new features. What can we expect? Ray tracing, new animation <laughs> system, etc. And the answer is just Yes. Yes, exactly. We're working on the new animation system. We're working on the ray tracing as we speak, right? Uh, we do have Vulkan. We do have DX12. We're working on the new consoles. So I think, you know, a lot of those questions that I saw there, <laughs> yeah, we are working on them. Um, and, and, and you will be hearing a lot more about them this year. Thank you, Arto. And yes, there was also, again, the question for more consistent communication. Um, even if the communication that there is nothing new to communicate like <laughs> we've seen in the second half of 2021. And the answer is yes. Honestly, so like I said, um, it's never fun to not be able to give you guys like the good news and the best news. And uh, Still, we're doing it. Um, and we are continued. We will continue to strive to keep an open and transparent channel. You know, at some points, uh, you just fight the obvious uh, problems and uh, it's a bit tiresome to tell you guys over and over again that there are only problems. Um, there are also a lot of solutions, but sometimes, you know, you try something and you end up back at square one. Uh, and that's just something you don't like to talk about. It, uh, it's, uh, it's tedious and tiresome. Exactly. Um, but we're actually making very great strides currently. Uh, we're very excited about what's happening. We're also very excited to have Arto with us. So yeah, definitely we're, we're keeping that up. Um, also this AMA, as I said previously, we want to do stuff like that more often to get you guys in touch with some of our developers to be able to talk about actual ongoings in the engine and to give you an insight just where we are at. Mm -hmm. um, and if we do that regularly, you know, we will probably do that with, as now also, the disclaimer that things are still subject to change. But I think that is way better than not having anything to talk about. And I guess you guys would agree there. <laughs> <laughs> I see, I see. Um, right, so let's see what else is there. Marketplace submission we already talked about. Yep. Um, there was a, a bit of an offside question from Tristian that was, what's one of the biggest lessons the CryEngine team has learned with COVID and developing towards 5.7? Hmm. It's difficult to pinpoint just one lesson. Um, it's definitely, you know, 
they were tough times, but they were tough for everyone. So I kind of, it's tiresome to always be like, oh, you know, pandemic and everything's difficult and yada, yada. Exactly. Uh, and everybody had it rough, right? But, you know, some people are also, some people had more luck than others. I think we are extremely lucky that we work in an industry where we already are, where we, we leverage a lot of technological technological advancement, um, but still suddenly being prompted to have a, a full corporation, uh, a company with 300 plus members has to operate on home office alone. That is even in our technological driven environment, that is a challenge. It is. Definitely. If that happens, yeah, sorry. If that happens from, you know, yesterday everything was fine and next day it's like wow um, regulations and insecurities and what's coming next and what's the state gonna say and what's the other laws gonna change um that just breeds a lot of insecurity and you cannot be prepared for everything exactly and then again like in the end of the day that some 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 work you can do remote easily um and some work let's say testing and on, on, on you know the consoles and, and and you know qa side of things you might need to be on site with all the different uh, devices at hand and then again like for content side right that whoever is creating a lot of content and then you're bound by the bandwidth and and, and infrastructure right uh which might cause a headache than uh, being remote and let me tell you germany is not <laughs> the best place to be <laughs> if you need bandwidth um so yeah, there are some restrictions that are simply out of our hands. Gladly, I'm from um, Finland. We have one of the world's best bandwidth. So in case you like snow and darkness and cold. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we should move. Maybe we should move headquarters to Finland. Then. That's yeah. an option. <laughs> <laughs> nice, nice. <laughs> oh, there was a... Is that Finnish? Gamdalf just put something in Quest uh, in, into the chat that is... I, I don't want to say this. I will butcher it. I will try. Tervetuloa Suomiin. Exactly. Welcome to Finland. Nice. Maybe we have a lot of new developers in Finland. Who knows? Old and new. I mean, there are some very successful studios in Finland already. So it's definitely a hotspot, I would say. Exactly. Cool. All right. So before we start any more speculations, <laughs> um, <laughs> let's say we're making great strides there as well. I think it's good uh, that a lot of the industry is also changing, you know, towards the whole of the industry has learned a hell lot about, you know, accepting home office as a regularity and that that actually works. Um, and that, that even makes for more and better productivity in a lot of cases, but the infrastructure needs to be there and it's just a different way of handling things. Exactly. In addition to what Arthur just mentioned, for example, you know, how dev kits that we develop our um, games on, for example, or certain technology that is still under wraps or under NDA. Sometimes we're not rem allowed to remove that from the premises. Um, stuff like that is a challenge and will always will be a challenge. But the good thing is that now with the pandemic, everybody had to deal with it. <laughs> everybody had to think about it. So we are we're slowly coming out on top in these terms. Exactly. Cool. So, um, Tristan, did that answer your many questions? <laughs> I hope so. Uh, then let's move on. So, let's see. Um, we had some questions from Jan. Uh, so, there were a couple of more detailed questions. Mm hmm. And the thing is, like I said, we like some detailed questions about how exactly is the terrain editor going to move forward? What is happening to the material editor, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we definitely appreciate more detailed questions because we see that they are coming from a very informed point of view, right? They are coming from people who are actually currently developing on the engine. They have um, projects in development and these are actual problems they are facing. Exactly. or challenges mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because... everybody's probably like that i was looking at the questions as well that i probably don't have the in-depth expertise exactly to answer like <laughs> in-depth to them but in the end of the day those topics tender linear terrain 
material editor, you know, you will talk about even shader crafts or, or you know, large scale worlds are all topics on, on our discussion table at the moment. And, and some of them are in active development and some of them are still in, in research as well. So um, definitely uh, good questions, but unfortunately we don't have exact answers today for those. I mean, it goes without saying that we are also our best customer, so to speak. We are always developing with our engine in-house, so our own games are also made with the engine. Um, and at the end of the day, many of these problems, we are facing them as well internally. We don't have a proper solution to provide them to the public yet, but we are working on them continuously. Um, but everybody who develops a game knows how it goes. You know, sometimes if you have a production and a scheduled deadline, you just have to hack things in, make things work, and that is all well and done. But if you provide a technology platform as complex as CryEngine to the public, you want it to be production ready in anybody's hands. And sometimes the feedback is that we aren't. <laughs> <laughs> and I mean, that is in the matter. That is a matter of perspective. Um, some people say that CryEngine can only be used in big teams, or that Crytek is the only developer who can actually work with the engine. But I think that the many showcases we see of great games and projects being developed on the engine speaks for us in the matter. The CryEngine is a very an all-in-one tool suit, which is very ambitious. So naturally, some things. Um, are more intuitive than others, and some things are more industry standard than others. But we always appreciate your feedback. We don't want to develop in a vacuum. We don't want to develop simply for our own needs. Um, so the feedback from our licensees is mighty important for us. And we're talking to them constantly. Also sometimes behind the scenes in, in cases where people are working on stuff that's under NDA uh, and they won't probably talk about it publicly on Discord. So please be assured that all this feedback and also the questions, even if we don't have answers immediately, are very much appreciated. We are looking into it and um, we hope that we can, like I said, open a more frequent discussion on this channel to speak about some of them. Exactly, exactly. They will be tremendously helpful for us to drive the product further and, and improve on those things that you mentioned as well. That um they are acknowledged right that we also know that there are challenges and, and things where we can improve right and we of course love to hear about them and then you know understand that where and um those things happen right and how could we even fix them right so um very much appreciated there were some more questions from dark rod 99 and some of them were a bit more detailed again. Mm -hmm. um, but one of them I wanted to pick because I think you can speak about that, um, Acho. And that question, I don't know, um, Darkrod99, are you here today? You are here um, talking about the PC features question. You want to join the discussion? You want to read your question yourself or should I do it? Yes, I can't. Mic is broken. All right, <laughs> then I will do it. <laughs> Understandable. <laughs> <All right. laughs> yeah. Um, so, talking about the PC features, will CryEngine have support for Intel XESS, AMD FSR, and NVIDIA DLSS? Those technologies are being used more and more by game engines and users to get better performance in their games. Even the Flex engine, a young, very good looking engine, by the way, is using <laughs> AMD FSR and CryEngine doesn't support any. So in, in, in to answer that question in short, we already have two thirds of them implemented. <laughs> and, uh, and then we're definitely yes, looking into all of these technologies and to, to have them for a uh, available through CryEngine as well. Nice. I hope that's a satisfactory answer. 
Yeah, nice. <laughs> nice is the answer to that answer. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't be specific there, but uh, you can kind of guess that <laughs> which might be implemented already. <laughs> um, Darkwood had a couple more questions. Um, what new rendering features are the team looking at in the future? What should be sure to expect in future releases? Again, you know, sure is a broad term here because we're um, still drafting everything out, but the general concepts like rendering techniques, etc., are to can you already speak about what our goal is there? Well, in general, of course, we are doing a lot of improvements and developing a lot of new features. We have a lot of research as well going on on, on, on that side of things, right? But what we can tell today, right? Ray tracing is definitely one key. Moving more computation to the GPU side in the in terms of the whole 3D engine side of things is really interesting concept, right? If you think about like visibility optimizations like occlusion calling and these kind of things, and some of these topics in, in the rendering pipeline actually go hand in hand with ray tracing, right? That when you're moving them into the GPU side, it actually benefits the ray tracing side and, and, and vice versa, right? So um, there is a lot of things that we, we still need to conclude on the research side, but there's a lot of excitement around that topic as well. And we'll be then happy to, you know, at some point host our, you know, rendering team member uh, here or, or uh, to, to talk about more about the topic and, and our individual topics and, and what we're doing on that front. But it's a bit too early today to, to go in in depth. Sounds good. Awesome, can't wait. Yeah, that's. I think that sounds good. All right, perfect. All right, let's see what else is there. So much more. Um, talking about partnerships, because there were some questions about, you know, is Crying Engine going to do this implementation or that implementation? Are we looking at partnerships um, with third-party providers, hardware providers, and also some softwares? Definitely, of course we are. We're working with a lot of uh, PC, you know, hardware providers, with a lot of mobile hardware providers, also console creators, right, and OEMs. Um, so in that sense, in general, to, to not to go to, into specifics whom, but you might guess a lot of them, um, we are definitely working with a bunch of different technology partners. And we're actually at the moment also talking to a lot of new ones in terms of software and these kind of things. So. Um, if there is something interesting in the market, please do, do ping us and, and we will definitely want to have a look. I think one thing that was important for many people for a long time was Speedtree. I mean, you can import Speedtree measures into the engine, but I know it's not exactly an integration. Mm -hmm. It's a bit more difficult, So, and other engines have it. So that's one thing that people were looking for, I think. Exactly. Um, and yeah. I mean, we see that people request this, uh, these things repeatedly, and I'm just saying that keep them coming, because of course, if we see that more people need this in their lives, it creates a business case for us that we can prioritize certain things over others. Yeah, exactly, and the the tool chain part of CryEngine is a big going through a big or like uh, redesign as well. What we are looking into do to to get it to more let's say smoother workflows like said that you know we definitely have heard the the need for better and smoother user experience so looking the connections to different third-party tools is of course really important and we want to understand what are those tools that everybody is looking to use right like nick said and i mean we had some uh, partnerships in the past as well uh, and we are going to Im expand on that, definitely. That is the goal. Cool, cool. All right, then. Um, another thing that I can probably answer. Where was it? There's a question for you as well. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so Dark Rod also had a question for me. Um, the question was, I've noticed that the developing of new games from the part of the community has been slow. Only a few games are released every year using CryEngine. Is there a plan in the works to make the engine more appealing, like more marketing CryEngine conference could help as well, or something like that? So uh, I do my best to not take that personally. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, so uh, basically, 
so first of all, there are games released with the engine. F significantly fewer games are released with CryEngine uh, than with Unity or Unreal. Um, and we have actually we have a lot of smaller indie developers who don't have a lot of marketing budget or um, can't hit like a wide appeal on their own. So what we do is we try to help them. We just wrapped up the CryEngine Game Awards, which is just one campaign we do each year where we pick usually the three best CryEngine games that have not been made by Crytek, but by other developer studios. And we we do a little campaign for them. Like we put them up for vote. Uh, we create content around them. We invite the developers to speak. We uh, partner up with other outlets like this year it was Defcom. Uh, to get to get them on the big stage, right? Um, I mean, some of them they have more money for marketing themselves than others, but we feel like everybody benefits, and that's uh, that's the results from many years past. We always had good feedback about that. Um, we can give back by putting people on the big stage and emphasizing on what they do. And these kind of things is usually what my team also works on, right? Uh, we. In the past, we have taken indie developers with us to um, conferences and fairs as well to give them uh, a physical stage to present their products. I'm happy that nowadays more has been done in general to help indie developers with smaller budget to be seen by big developers. But we, in Crytek, we have been doing that for years. Um, as long as I've been here, I've always uh, been doing that. And even before that, we have always tried to support the people who are developing with our engine. And we will continue to do that. But honestly, uh, the current plan is that we have the long-term support update now. Uh, because we want everyone to be able to finish their projects and to keep working uh, on what they work. We want to bring on new people to uh, show them the engine and the great technology we are doing. But again, the global pandemic <laughs> is also putting a bit of a hold on many trade fairs and restrictions on how we display things. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, it is a big uh, chance, though. What we have been doing, for example, this year, more than the years before, is we have been uh, working with universities to help them educate and um, students and uh, young developers on the engine or other things because nowadays because everybody has switched to home office setups etc it has been much more much less time uh, consuming for our developers to you know simply go online and teach or go online and talk in public conferences that that were hosted online um, and we have actually been doing that a lot uh, with good results as well. We have been participated in the NVIDIA uh, tech conference, we, uh, Microsoft, etc. So um, with many partners, we have been on the digital stage. Uh, and we are continuing to do that. And with the near future, like I said, we're looking into the beta program to first things first, you know, pay back the loyalty you guys that have always been here um, have given to us so that you get the to call dips on uh, the first look at the new CryEngine, you know. Um, yeah, and a CryEngine conference or a CryEngine event like that, I think the last time we had that was in 2016. And I wanted to do it ever since, honest, honestly. Um, I wanted to do it ever since. And it's still on my <laughs> it's planned, right? I, I will, I, I swear to the gods, I will do it. Um, and if it's not a physical event, um, because, you know, pandemic so far is still not endemic. So if we can't have a physical event, I'm planning to have a digital event that also is more accessible to people who, for small studios, for example, who don't have a lot of income yet and can't be traveling far. Um, these digital events have a lot of, uh, opportunity. So long story short, yes, yes, and yes, we are doing something already. We keep striving for more and we are always happy for your feedback and engagement because honestly, after all, that's what gives me a business case. If I do stuff like this AMA, for example, and like 40 people show up, I can say, hey, 40 people showed up. 
um, maybe if we're doing a bigger thing, even more people show up. Um, this is of interest, guys. So yeah, just spread the word. Uh, you can also help uh, spreading the word um, in your developer cycles. That CryEngine is worth a look. And then we can do even more in the future. Does that answer your question? Awesome is the answer. <laughs> All right. Nice. Cool. Then let's see, because we are closing in, right? And we were looking at where, let me see what's happening. Um, so, uh, yeah. One thing I think that is, there are maybe two things that I think are important from the questions that were previously asked um, that we didn't uh, put a finger on before. Uh, Yorma asked something that is important, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, Yorma, you asked that even today. Are you here and do you want to read our, your question yourself? I can't see them currently. Probably not here right now. So Maybe I will not. I will read it. Mm -hmm. Um because I think it, it, it was important for more people. Um the question was I would like to add to this question also that what is the plan for Vulcan API and mobile support since those were on the roadmap previously. Yeah, and there were some other questions about you know mobile support pipeline and where we at with that with CryEngine. Artu, do you want to take this one? Definitely, definitely. Um, well, as many of you know, when we released Client 2, that was some based on Android and Vulkan, right? So we do have that. Um, it's just not productized, right? Uh, we're looking at the moment the roadmap as well for the mobile side of things. So we do have a lot of that technology and expertise around. Um, it's just a matter of now that when uh, we will, you know, jump into productizing those tools um, as we are now first and foremost looking into our AAA productions to come. Um, so that's a, something that we need to follow up on, um, but we do have uh, people working on them, upkeeping them. So uh, it's not forgotten, but it's just a matter of prioritization at the moment, right? Um, so yes, we will in the future have mobile pipeline Awesome. Perfect. Um, then there was another question from uh, Von. So, Von Bismarck. I think you're here today. I've seen you. Yes. Um, you want to ask your question about the animation system? Or should I read it? Yes, I can ask. I do have a mic. Sure. Then if you're okay, just a reminder, this is being recorded. It's going on YouTube. But I've heard your voice on YouTube before, so I guess you're fine with that. Um, you can re request permission to speak, and I can lift you on stage. Ah, exactly. Perfect. Hello. First speaker. Hey, how's it going? Thank you. <laughs> Hi, Vol. Hi. Hi. Yeah, so I'll just get straight to it. That way everyone can get back to business, hopefully. Um, my question was originally about the, the new type of animation system that was showcased by Claudio. Mm -hmm. and pow mm -hmm. and if that's that type of system and i'm sure other modules too that are still being worked on is that something that we might get a peek on on the lts or would that be something more into the beta program as nick mentioned a little bit earlier it, it, um it will be definitely in the beta program so lts we won't change all those tool chains and, and the, the back ends right uh but definitely it's one of the most important development uh that we have ongoing at the moment is to renew our animation pipeline and then it's based on exactly on on those like uh what was already started right and presented um but yeah you'll you'll get then a peek under that on the the beta program side and on the next generation of grind Oh, great. That beta program also include things that you guys do internally with like stuff like with the new crisis game or stuff maybe with um, uh, any other, you know, internal developments you guys might be having and testing that you might want to pass on to us, especially for, you know, small developers too, to get a, get a chance to work on these tools, get used to them. Because I think the, the hardest thing I think a lot of us understand too, is that 
CryEngine has this uphill battle of like the learning curve. Correct, and... correct. In, in the end of the day, to answer to that question, of course, like we can't reveal some things that might be still, you know, confidential in development cycles, but we do in the future as well want to emphasize the fact that like in, in previous grinds and versions as well, that we want to deliver you production proven features, right? So we will as fast as possible be bringing and productizing them into the cry engine from our productions. And we're, that's why we're working so closely with our internal clients, our production teams, to make sure that you'll get optimized production battle proven features, right? And that's going to be one of the, the probably the biggest differences that we're not providing you something very generic. It's going to be actually something that we have been using in productions. Great. Yeah, that's that's my question. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Vaughn. Nope, thank you for having me. Cool. So then we have like five minutes left. <laughs> Is there anyone <laughs> who has a very burning question they still want to ask? Yeah, did we forget something from the list? Only only real questions, guys. So Revolution Art is asking how often do we get updates now, like every quarter? Um I hope so. But <laughs> honestly the thing is I don't want to uh I promise you a very rigid schedule because then you know some some things happen and then I have to break my promises again and I don't want that. I just want to say that we're doing our best to give you more frequent updates. Um, Arthur is here now. Um, we are still here. We have always been here, and we're doing our best to bring you stuff like this more often. And I think Arthur is also stoked to speak to you guys more. Exactly. And, uh, yeah. Exactly. It's just more about that we we can get cleared on the the roadmaps and what we're at the moment laying uh, laying out, um, and then it will be easier for Nick and the community team to as well arrange more frequent uh, discussions and updates. But we do want to get them done, and and I think the discussion was even that at some point would be great if we could do monthly updates, uh, what's going on. But I think we are still like Nick said, uh, we can't promise so. We shouldn't do that before we are sure that we can do that. Uh, Zef just joined. <laughs> I think he, I think they just joined. Um, so Zef, um, did your questions get answered? I don't remember your question exactly. We had a lot of questions. Maybe you can uh, <laughs> ask it again. Um, there's no transcript currently, I think, if not somebody uh, was writing everything down. But um, we are recording this and it will be on YouTube in a couple of days in a podcast format so you can listen to it. Uh, several people are typing. <laughs> yeah, I remember Zef had a question early on um, when we announced the AMA, but unfortunately I... It probably did get lost a little when everyone was like upvoting things and because that was a question asked so early. Yeah, there was a lot of questions, good questions coming in, so. Yeah. Mm, I'm just looking at, I can find it. Uh, render pipeline changes to support viewport dash RTT has slipped each release since 5.4 and even been redefined but that that is not a question sorry what was the question about that <sighs> so, so many that the chat is just exploding <laughs> <laughs> uh, my machine can't keep up the mm. god like i can't even God. Maybe we'll need to. Um, we'll, it seems that we might need to do a follow up on one way or another, or a next, you know, so. um, yes. call as I well so. to cover some of them. Yeah, every everyone is typing. Um, okay, I. D <laughs> 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 I think uh, we might have to wrap it up, guys. Um, but yeah, thanks for your questions. We, like I said, don't fret. Um, 
some things we just couldn't answer just yet, which is fine. That is why we want to do it more frequently. Um, wait, my question was unanswered. How are you guys? All right, we have time for that one, um, Indian Hunter. How are you, Arto? <laughs> I'm doing great. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I'm also doing great because I'm extra excited for all the cool things that are coming uh, this way. Um, so yeah, big things are coming. So I'm, exactly. I can't wait to be able to share them with you. Exactly, exactly. It was a great, great event, right? And uh, great questions. And uh, definitely, we should wrap them up as well. And and you know, get all the the most important questions that we didn't get answer, and then then follow up on on later on those as well. Perfect. All right. So guys. Thanks for being here with us. Thanks for taking the time to ask your questions. And thanks for bearing with us when, um, you know, life happens and we had to uh, move this ahead a week. Um, keep them coming. The next AMA will come definitely. And we will again tell you ahead of time when it's happening. So you have time to bring your questions. Um, we might also do more focused, uh, more focused Q&As where we take a topic you know, we, we see the burning topics that uh, that you have burning in your chest. We see the questions about the AI system, uh, the animation system. We also see your requests for more tutorials, and we are working on it. Um, Brian is working on it. Um, Brian is also working on the certification program. I, I saw there was a question about that as well. But that is ecosystem stuff that will be built up gradually, um, definitely with the next installment. Uh, so bear with us. This is all in the works and you will have plenty of time to ask more detailed questions and we will come with more detailed answers when the time is right. Perfect. Exactly. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everyone. Have a great evening or morning or whatever time zone it is. And we speak to you soon. Thanks, Nick. Bye bye. Bye.